you've got to be realistic and you've got to understand that you don't make the timeline. The virus makes the timeline. Donald Trump's timeline for reopening the economy by Easter, which he has now walked back, was never really viable, not medically and not legally. But Trump's call for the churches to be packed on Easter Sunday is still concerning because it echoes the problematic response to coronavirus by some of his most loyal supporters, white Christian evangelicals. Trump's spiritual advisor, Paula White, took the opportunity to ask for donations to her Florida church, clarifying without a hint of irony that donations would not go to victims of COVID-19. One Arizona pastor said his congregation is ready to, quote, lick the floor of the church to prove there's no actual virus at all. Then there's televangelist Jim Baker, who took it to a whole new level, selling a $125 concoction called the Silver Solution that he strongly suggested would be effective against coronavirus. Baker has since been sued by the state of Missouri and warned to stop selling his fake cure by the FDA, and it no longer appears to be on his website. And of course, the Trump cabinet's Bible study teacher, Ralph Drollinger, brought back an oldie but a goodie. The COVID-19 is really just an expression of God's wrath caused by America's increasing acceptance of gays and lesbians. Joining me now is Frank Schaefer, religious reform activist and author of Why I Am an Atheist Who Believes in God. Um, Frank, let me play for you. We don't play a ton of Trump on the show, um, uh, but let me play you his comments about bringing the country back to work by Easter. Here he is. I'd love to have it open by Easter. Okay, I would oh, love wow. to have it open okay. by Easter. I will, I will tell you that right now. I would love to have that. It's such an important day for other reasons, but I'll make it an important day for this, too. So I think Easter Sunday, and you'll have packed churches all over our country, I think it would be a beautiful time. When everything we're doing. Who suggested that? I just thought it was a beautiful time. It would be a beautiful time, a beautiful timeline. So that was it's a great day. All right, your, your response, um, Frank. Well, first of all, Joy, uh, good health to you and the whole MSNBC family. Um, you know, this is a time when thank you feel you. love for people, and we say hello on the street, so hello to you, and God bless you, Joy. Thank you. Um, we are thank at a you, time and you now as well. when the... Thank you. We're at a time now when the, the naked, uh, lick spittle enablement of Donald Trump by his evangelical followers is more horribly obvious than ever. Franklin Graham, his big supporter, I uh, told him to call a national day of prayer. And of course, we know Trump would never do this by himself. We have all the pieces that you played of people trying to uh, cash in on this, to push their anti-gay homophobia. And we also see that the magical thinking for evangelicals that allows them, for instance, to deny climate change, to deny scientific evidence on gay people being born that way, to deny so many things that we know from any common sense point of view, let alone a scientific point of view, are true. They have been nurtured from birth to accept alternative facts. They are perfect dupes for someone who calls everything fake news that he doesn't agree with. So when we come to this time of COVID-19 overtaking our country, a literal life and death issue, we see two things very clearly, Joy. One is the utter moral bankruptcy of this leader who pits himself against governors trying to save their people, as you had in your last segment. And the second is the, other, the utter moral bankruptcy of evangelical, the white evangelical voter, having rented out Jesus to this moronic monster who, in this time of crisis, far from being our Winston Churchill leading us to freedom against the Axis in Germany and others, basically tells people my age those pushing their 70s, that we might as well do what the Jews did in World War II, that the Nazis told them to do. Put, a, put on a yellow star, identify yourself as old, forget care for you guys. We're not going to make more respirators, especially not for governors that we don't like. Just go off and die so the stock exchange numbers go up and I look good. And the fact of the matter is, that is not an exaggeration. We have Republican governors. We have people who are in positions of power and Donald Trump trying to push a business as usual agenda. And instead of evangelicals standing up and saying, wait a minute, we bought into your candidacy because you're supposed to be the quote unquote pro-life president. 
We have now a pro-death president who would rather have his economic numbers go up chasing a 2020 re-election than save lives. And the evangelicals are going along with it and giving him cover. This whole Easter nonsense was just simply more currying favor with that base. A footnote, maybe, but very and telling. Uh, but, and to, to, before one thinks that this is simply, uh, you know, one man's sort of opinion, there's a, there is a, a New York Times piece that says the religious rights hostility to science is crippling our coronavirus response. Uh, it reads, today, the hardcore of climate deniers is concentrated among people identify as religiously conservative Republicans. This denial of science and critical thinking among religious ultra-conservatives now haunts the American response to the coronavirus crisis. And that is by uh, uh, one Catherine Stewart. The, the, the question I guess I have, Frank, is whether these beliefs, this, this almost religious belief in Trump himself as the savior, mm -hmm. does it survive actual deaths in your own church, in your own family? This virus will not stop at the door of these evangelical churches. It'll come inside. When people they know, when their own families, when people start getting sick, can this unshakable belief in Trump survive that? Will they start to believe the science when it's literally right in front of them? You know, I'm reminded, Joy, of the passage from the Bible where Christ says, though one come back from the dead, they would not believe. Let me tell you a parallel in answer to your question that I hope I'm wrong on. Think of all the churches that were shot up by gun-toting fools recently, even one in Texas, where gun laws are so permissive that you're surprised that people don't give you a gun at first. Did the evangelical majority say, wait a minute, they're shooting up the churches now. Maybe we won't support the NRA anymore. No, they did not. They are so in love with the, the gospel of hatred, gun ownership, protect yourself against your neighbor, keep the foreigners out, lock babies in cages. They have denied the Lord Jesus Christ in his teaching to the point where there is no redemption for the hardest of the hard poor. Now, does that mean that individuals won't peel away? Yes. And I appeal to my Christian brothers and sisters, rethink your support for a man that would dangle respirators over a, uh, over a governor who disagrees with him and turn back to the teachings of Jesus away from this man. Yeah, and the teachings are very, are very clear that it is the poor, the least of these, the foreigner uh, that we should be protecting. As an old Methodist, that's, a, that's what I was brought up to believe. Uh, Frank Schaefer, thank you so much. I really appreciate your advocacy. God bless you. Uh, be safe. And come